Hi, it's Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have peace of mind, real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making fast even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. In last week's blog I've talked about the five reasons why you need to question perceived authority and expert status in intensive care. You can check out last week's blog by clicking on the link below this video. In this week's blog I want to talk to you about has the intensive care team got the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care. Before I get into today's topic, I want to share a quote with you that I wrote on today's topic and the quote says, All of life is a negotiation. In every human interaction, you are either talking other people into doing what you want or they are talking you into doing what they want. You don't get what you deserve in life, you only get what you negotiate. The strongest negotiating position is always being able to look for alternatives, relentlessly pursue them and mean it. If you don't believe you deserve what you want for your critically ill loved one and if you don't speak up for yourself and for your critically ill loved one, state what you want in no uncertain terms and if you are not willing to dare the perceived authority and the perceived power of the intensive care team then you are all too often going to feel and be shortchanged, left out, fleeced and disappointed. Remember, you and your family are in a once in a lifetime situation that you can't afford to get wrong and you and your family need to know what to do when you are having a loved one critically ill in intensive care. Not knowing what to do, not knowing what questions you need to ask not knowing how to position yourself and position your critically ill loved one correctly and powerfully and worst of all not knowing what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care is often a matter of life or death. So today's topic is a really heavily emotionally charged topic that I want to talk to you about. It's also a topic with a lot of grey areas where different opinions, different values, different belief systems, different frames of mind and most of all different interests will clash. It's also an area where intensive care teams have the perceived upper hand so to speak, where families of critically ill patients in intensive care simply don't know what to do, they don't know what questions they need to ask and they don't know how to position themselves and their critically ill loved one powerfully, strongly and correctly because they are so overwhelmed by their often negative emotions, by their fear, by their frustrations and by feeling extremely vulnerable. Therefore the questions and the topic that I want to dive in today is has the intensive care team got the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care? As I have talked about in my quote in the beginning all of life is negotiation and how you position yourself in a negotiating situation is often a matter of your belief system. It's a matter of you seeking out help of people who know what to do and it's a matter how you view yourself. Now, if you are like 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who have no peace of mind, no power, no control and no influence and if you think that the intensive care team is way more powerful than you and your family are then I've got bad news for you. Because if you and your family buy into the perceived authority and the perceived power of the intensive care team you and your family will consciously or unconsciously give the intensive care team the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care. Henry Ford once famously said. Whether you think you can or you can't, you're absolutely right. And Henry Ford was right by saying that. The intensive care team certainly thinks that they can make life or death decisions 
all the time, 24 hours a day, 365 days in a year, often in a blink of an eye, without consulting with you or with your family, let alone with your critically ill loved one. So the fact of the matter is, do you believe that you can challenge the perceived power and the perceived authority of the intensive care team when it comes to whether your critically ill loved one is going to live or going to die? Or do you continue aligning yourself with the limiting beliefs of the 99% of families of critically ill patients in intensive care who have no peace of mind, no control, no power and no influence? Let's face it, if your critically ill loved one is in intensive care and is either very unstable and in a very critical condition, or is in a life-threatening situation, or is in intensive care for long-term treatments and long-term stays, including long-term ventilation, or your loved one may be having a severe or traumatic head or brain injury, or your loved one may be threatened with an NFR, not for resuscitation, or DNR, do not resuscitate order. Or your loved one may be in a situation where the intensive care team suggests a withdrawal of treatment or a limitation of treatment as being quote unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one. Or your loved one may even be approaching the end of life in intensive care. Chances are that the intensive care team will have positioned your critically ill loved one's diagnosis, their prognosis, as well as their treatment and care in a negative light. The fact of the matter is that especially when it comes to tricky and difficult situations around real or perceived end-of-life situations, you and your family need to ask yourself whether the intensive care team is talking about a real or a perceived end-of-life situation. So what's the difference? between a real and a perceived end-of-life situation. I'm really glad you've asked. A real end-of-life situation is where there is no cure, no treatment and no surgery that can save the life of your critically ill loved one. Things can happen very quickly in a real end-of-life situations and death of your critically ill loved one is often imminent. On the other hand, however, a perceived end-of-life situation is a situation where the intensive care team perceives that a limitation or the withdrawal of treatment might be quote-unquote in the best interest of your critically ill loved one. It's just their perception and the perception of the intensive care team is often not even real. Intensive care teams always think that they know what's best. After all, they are the smart ones, right? The fact of the matter is that intensive care teams often use their perceived power, their perceived authority and their expert status to get what they want. They also often use formal family meetings to position and cement their expert status, their perceived power and their perceived authority. They also often use formal family meetings to meet with families of critically ill patients to break the bad news. Whenever the intensive care team wants to discuss real or perceived end-of-life situations and whenever the intensive care team wants to bring up withdrawal of treatment, limitation of treatment, NFR, not for resuscitation or DNR, do not resuscitate orders for your critically ill loved one, they do that by having a chat in a formal family meeting. You should check out our resources about formal family meetings where I wrote about the ultimate six step guide for family meetings with the intensive care team that gets you to have peace of mind, control, power and influence fast. Check out our product section for that. Now. The fact of the matter is that whenever the intensive care team is asking for the formality of a family meeting, that they have already made up their mind on how they present and position your critically ill loved one's diagnosis, 
their prognosis and their care and treatment. The intensive care team has their game plan mapped out so to speak to get what they want and they're not meeting with you to consult you they're meeting with you to tell you what's going to happen. The reality and the fact of the matter is that the intensive care team has positioned and is presenting your critically ill loved one situation according to what's happening behind the scenes in intensive care and according to what has been discussed behind the scenes. The wheels that are in motion behind the scenes in intensive care are way too powerful for you to understand and if you don't quickly learn and discover you will be doomed. The fact of the matter is if you don't have a strong strategy, if you don't know what questions to ask, if you don't know how to position yourself strongly and correctly, and most of all if you don't know how to get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly, then yes, the intensive care team has all the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care. On the other end, however, if you do have a strategy, if you do know what questions to ask, if you do know how to position yourself strongly and correctly, and if you believe that you can have peace of mind, control, power and influence, then quite frankly the intensive care team doesn't have the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care. The good news is that after more than 15 years intensive care nursing in three different countries where I have also worked for more than five years as a nurse unit manager in intensive care and where I have literally looked after thousands of critically ill patients and their families and I have and I am consulting dozens of families of critically ill patients via Skype, via the phone or via email all the time and it's crystal clear that my strategies are working. Especially when it comes to real or perceived end of life situations I have insights, I have developed tools and strategies that you can very quickly get peace of mind, control, power and influence. The fact of the matter is that if you think that the intensive care team has the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care, then they will. If you don't believe that the intensive care team has the ultimate power when it comes to stop treating your critically ill loved one in intensive care, and if you learn and discover what I teach either in my ebooks, videos, audio recordings or in my one-on-one -on -one consulting sessions via Skype, over the phone or via email, then you will have peace of mind, control, power and influence very, very quickly. So, how do you do that? And how can you get peace of mind, control, power and influence quickly whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. You get to that all-important feeling of peace of mind, control, power and influence when you download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn quickly how to get peace of mind, real power and real control and how you can influence decision making fast whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care. Your free instant impact report gives you in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill or is even dying in intensive care. Sign up and download your free instant impact report now by entering your email below. In your free instant impact report you learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In your free report you will also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, discover the many competing interests in intensive care and how your critically ill loved one's treatment may depend on those competing interests. How to eliminate fear, frustration, stress struggle and vulnerability even if your loved one is dying. Five mind-blowing tips and strategies helping you to get on the right path to peace of mind, control, power and influence in your situation. You'll get 
real world examples that you can easily adapt to your and your critically ill loved one's situation. How to stop being intimidated by the intensive care team and how you will be seen as equals. You will get crucial behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our Your Questions Answered section where I answer your questions or simply send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com with your questions. Or you can call us, find phone numbers, international phone numbers on our contacts tab. Also check out our product section where you get more ebooks, videos and audio recordings and where you can also get one-on-one -on -one consulting with me via Skype or over the phone by clicking on the products tab. This is Patrick Hutzel from IntensiveCareHotline.com and I'll see you again next week in another update.